Dear students, now I'm going to talk about alpha helices, which are a type of the secondary structures that are taken up by the proteins once they fold. There will be two modules on alpha helices and this is the first one in the series. As I mentioned earlier, that the atomic distances or interatomic distances, they tell us that what type of interactions may exist between these atoms. So if a distance is long, it can be a different interaction. And if the distance between two atoms is small, a different type of interaction may be occurring. So these different interactions, they lead to the formation of hydrogen bonds, electrostatic interactions, and so on and so forth. Importantly, if two atoms in an X-ray structure are known to be 0.96 angstroms apart, then this is typically an indication of a covalent bond that exists between these two atoms. However, if two atoms have been measured to be 1.97 angstrom apart or about two angstroms apart, then this is an indication of the existence of hydrogen bond between those two atoms. So therefore, by looking at the interatomic distances or simply the distance between two atoms, we can talk about what kind of interaction may be occurring between those atoms. Hence, the X-ray data that you obtain from the X-ray crystallography must at least have 1.97 angstrom resolution because otherwise you will not be able to differentiate between atoms that are at distances less than 1.97 and therefore you will not be able to uh, detect hydrogen bonding. In this diagram, I'm going to show what happens when a protein folds along its backbone into a 3D structure and the shape it takes. So if these are the C terminals and N terminals in the backbone of the protein, then the protein may actually start folding by the interaction between these amino and C terminals, that is the N and C terms. So as you can see, if interactions like these start to happen, then the protein has started to take form of a spiral. Therefore, such interactions can give rise to complex structures in the proteins. It is very interesting because this type of interaction leads to the formation of alpha helices that I'm going to show you now. Here is a figure of the alpha helix. As you can see, it's called an alpha helix because it looks like a helix. Of course, DNA is a double helix like that. So you can see that the C terms and the N terms, they are making hydrogen bond here, as well as at this position, as well as at this position, at this position, and here as well. So these hydrogen bonds are holding the helix together in the form of a spiral that is shown here. An important point to note here is that this repetition occurs exactly 3.6 residues per turn. So this is an indication that after every fourth amino terminal, the carboxyl group makes a hydrogen bond with that N term and therefore contributes to the formation of the helix. So in conclusion, the X-ray crystallography data shows us that the hydrogen atoms of N term may come together with the oxygen atom of the C term and this should be at the fourth position immediately following the N term and if this happens repeatedly then an alpha helix is formed. The, uh, their atomic, the interatomic distances 
are about 1.9 angstroms that is almost equal to a hydrogen bond.